Okay. I think we're good. Um, I mean, obviously, you know why I'm calling. Uh, maybe you got some stories or something like that. Um, anything you wanted to say, you know. I've talked to Brian Van, and I'm tr still trying to get Monty to talk to me, and Justin. Um, maybe one other guy, but, you know. Trying to get the two schedules and that. Yeah. It's it's the audio that's tough to get. I've got lots of visual stuff. Got tons of pictures, obviously. But that's cool. you know, I figured it's it's the audio that really brings it together. So I'm just trying to get the stories. Yeah. Did uh, so? What stemmed this? I mean, did Sally ask you to do that, or you take it upon yourself? Just uh, kind I kind of, I kind of took it upon myself, but I, I kind of, I mean, I wouldn't say that I felt bad per se, but like. Sally reached out to me over the winter to ask me if I had any video of him. She was looking for audio of him and all that stuff, and I, I don't have any. I didn't really do video back then, and I have like a million pictures of him, but no video. Yeah. And I, I've kind of been doing that kind of stuff lately, and it's been it's been interesting to do, and I thought it'd be a good thing to do for her. So I tried to get all of it at the track, but, but when I, I got a lot of video at the track, but not as much dialogue as I wanted. So I figured I'd reach out to some people and see what I can do. No, that's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I didn't know what what was going on or how it was, but you know, I know some people did some interviews with you and whatnot, and you know, that was that was pretty cool. I didn't expect her to involve me in doing the the walk around the track, spreading Mike's ashes, and picking things up. So, um, very heartfelt and tough to do, but kind of keep things to myself and whatnot. You know, you see somebody else upset, you know. Yeah kind of follow their lead and kind of maintain but definitely unexpected mike and i had talked uh and sally we talked about you know me coming out there because i work all over michigan so they'd gotten settled in and stuff and they were like yeah come on out so i was going to work it through a work trip and stay the weekend and stuff and then he got sick and so it obviously never happened but kind of one of the things i regret was you know guess you don't know how much time you have with somebody so you just kind of put things off put things off work gets busy life gets busy and you forget and regret not doing those things with the people that that uh you were friends with or yeah. you had relationships with so it, it's definitely tough but um as for mike gosh i met mike almost 20 years ago i want to say 2003 2004 were you a Buell guy or a track rider? Or both? No, I was. I was friends with Monty prior to him doing STT. Okay. So just uh, through motorcycles, met Monty riding on the street or Royal Oak or something like that, and um, then Monty started Sylvania Track Time, and I was racing uh, Glira stuff, two thousand one, two thousand two, and I got done with that. And, I don't know, I showed up for a practice or something, and Monty seen me and said, hey, when you're done with the season, or maybe they were coming in after a race weekend, and they had a Monday event or something, and he was like, hey, would you be interested in doing a, being a coach? And I was like, well, I don't know what's all involved or whatnot. And he says, my next next event we have is Mid-Ohio. Why don't you come down? So I went down there and, and rode with them for the day, and I was like, yeah, this is pretty sweet, you know, this is a pretty cool gig. So started coaching with them there and uh then moved into doing tires with myself and dave babel and then um monty was still basically doing all the events and then they got so spread out that he couldn't be at every event so i know he had asked mike to help out and do um the director position at some of the events so mike had taken on that but i had met mike i think at shields we used to do every year at the beginning of the season, we'd meet at Shields Pizza with Mike, Sally, the core group, Dennis Baker. Um, I think Justin ended up coming in at some point on that, but Babels, um, I can remember Maddie was in a carrier the first year I met Babels. Mm -hmm. um, We're talking like 03, 05, 06, something. Uh, I think that was 04. So I rode 03 with them, and I think 04 we met there, and that's where I met Mike and Sally. And just kind of everybody hung out, got to know each other, and just laugh and stuff like that. And I know Mike was big into the Buells. Did they did Buell days and stuff like that. And 
Mike was big in the Harleys. Uh, found out he worked at Ford. My brother works at Ford currently. It's crazy um, to think how it doesn't seem that long ago I started riding with STT in 07. And it seems like 04 is like only three years before that. And that's actually, what, 15, 16 years ago now? Yeah. So I don't even know. I used to do track days when it was Sylvania track time. And Monty ran all that. So I have a, a T-shirt and a membership card that so it says Sylvania track time, which is pretty humorous because right. every night I'll pull it out, take a picture, or somebody's like, oh, my God, you got one of the shirts. Right. So Sylvania Sport Bike went out of business, and Monty kept the track time. And oh, was it, is it a dealership? Yeah, it was a dealership. Okay, so it started out as like a dealership Ohio. track rental thing. Yeah, Sylvania, Ohio, and they did started doing track days for customers. Okay, that's cool. Customer appreciation thing. You bought a Ducati, you came out, you you did a track day with them and whatnot, and then Patrick closed up the business, and Monty took off with then changing the name to Sport Bike Track Time. So it's always been STT. It's just a different name. Interesting. So the dealership closed, and the track days kept going. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. And it grew. Monty threw a trailer in and started doing tires, and the truck and trailer would come, and then more people, and it just grew into this business that it is um today and you know richard buying it and you know mike and sally continuing on and pretty much all those you know directors stayed on board um yeah there's a lot of people that have been around since the beginning it seems like i mean like nick nick and mike actually like go way way back and a lot of the people i've met i didn't realize they went back all the way to almost to the beginning you yeah. know so mm-hmm. yeah that's yeah a lot of people come and go and I only quit riding because I blew my shoulder out. So I try to dirt bike as much as I can just to keep some sort of motorcycle in my life. Streets, I like the street. I, I, I'd love to ride, but the texting and driving has just gotten so ridiculous that I don't even want to be out there. Yeah, I kind of got away from street riding also. Yeah. For, for I mean, just texting, that's one of them. A lot of reasons It's just there's so much more risk. And I mean, you're not mm-hmm. it's the same thing everybody at the track says. Right, yeah. yeah. But about Mike, so I uh, found out he worked at Ford, um, met Cozy. Cozy worked at Ford. He worked in the same building as my brother. My dad's retired from Ford. Um, you know, we'd meet up every now and then at Denny's. Mike, you know, is a creature of habit, so he has places he likes to eat. Mm-hmm. Play, he has to be home before dark, doesn't drive after dark. So it's all these weird things that that I think about now that he's gone, it's like, ah, you know, quit being such a wuss and whatnot. Right. It's like, or the, the clicking of the pens, you know, some OCD things that bothered him. And, and it's like, you just found odd, but it's like, now that he's not here, you miss it. You, mm-hmm. you, you see the things that he did and you're just like, wow, man, I'm never going to have that harassment with Mike or, you know, kind of mess with him and roast him back and forth. Um, well, like you lunches. like you said, none of us none of us saw it coming. I didn't know. I didn't know that. No. You know, I yeah. kind of I thought you know at least you don't if you don't think about that. I thought at least ten years, right? But if you need, if you're not thinking even about that, you're just like for he's not going anywhere, right? And, you know, yeah. Miss doing the dinners at the Gratton Bar or the occasional. I, I didn't go off to uh, Candlestone very often because I always stayed in my RV at the track. So. We used to stay over there, and yeah, we. Um, when my wife used to come to the track with me more, uh, we'd stay over there, and yeah, Mike and Sally would always be over there with Jeff and maybe a few other people, depending on who, you know. Mike was always drinking his yeah, brandy and wine. Yeah, Justin. Uh, and Sally would be drinking her, her vodka and, and Mike's hard lemonade, and <laughs> they'd, they'd, they'd get a little bit, a little toasty, and then and Mike would put her to bed. Yeah. Uh, you know. I mean, good times. Um, Another thing that was a Mike thing was uh, the styrofoam McDonald's cups. If you ever seen, yeah. you always had the McDonald's cup. I never got the cup, but one day McDonald's ran out of the plastic ones, and I got a styrofoam cup, and I got a large Diet Coke, and the thing held ice all day. So I was like, this has got to be it. This has got to be the Mikeism. why he wants the styrofoam cup, because anytime he goes to McDonald's, he'd ask for the styrofoam cup. So... Um, <laughs> That's funny. Nobody really? nobody told me that story yet. I've heard the Dildo no. Dan story a few times and so on and so, so forth. But Usually, um, I can't remember as much the styrofoam come up during the day, but after we were done riding, 
the wine would come out. He'd pour out wine and I think ice in the in the styrofoam cup. He'd walk around, do his thing, and then it'd end up at Grattan Bar or at the Candlestone, and then turn the drinking on from there. So yeah, the styrofoam cup thing was was pretty humorous. Um, yeah, that's funny. I'm sure I got some things here I wrote down. Just I didn't want to forget. Um, I mentioned the driving after dark. Uh, Shields Pizza has hung out with them a few times, just not STT things, but yeah. Uh, did anybody mention to you the toy in the toolbox? Yeah, but you should just tell it again because I love because <laughs> <laughs> everybody mentioned that. That's a theme. Yeah. Yeah. So toy in the toolbox. Did I get it? No. I mean, like, get it, like, did I borrow tools from Mike and open the drawer and like, oh my gosh, no. Um, actually needed to borrow something from one day and he told me you know oh yeah it's over here but he must have forgot and sent me right to the tool and i was like wait a minute and i said where's the toy at where's where's the double-handed toy at? oh he didn't give you the dildo treatment <laughs> yeah yeah so you know so it was fun to sit in the tech shed or be sitting outside or whatever most times i didn't ride towards the end when monty owned it I didn't ride until afternoon. I was doing tires, so if I rode, it was always in the afternoon after tires were done and stuff like that. So it's the best time to ride, anyway. Yeah, I mean, people get wore out, and you go out, and there's less people on the track. So man, and then the surface is warm. Yeah, especially so at Grattan. Yeah, all the above was always good, and uh, we'd sit there, and somebody come up and, "Hey, do you have a special wrench, or do you have a tire gauge?" You might be, like, "Oh yeah, sure, it's in the top drawer. <laughs> just go over there, help yourself." And you know, they're like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> <laughs> and we're all just sitting there laughing because some people would either say something, or some people would just have a weird look, and they just you get what they need, and they would leave <laughs> and not say nothing, like they were embarrassed. To say yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, because that's <laughs> yeah, I didn't think about that, but totally. <laughs> guy's keeping his sex toys in here i guess i better just keep moving just another <laughs> just another tool for another job right, yeah. <laughs> justin sent me a picture of the dildo dan thing where that supposedly came from um uh, where they taped the dildo to the back of the guy's bike and he didn't know about it and okay did he have the picture of the bike he sent yeah he, he sent me the the photo of like the bike with a dildo taped to the back of it so i'm pretty okay. sure that's yeah yeah, I remember it was Jim Jermaine. I remember the guy, Dan, everything else. But, yeah, pretty humorous. <laughs> yeah, it's um, a good time. See him going down the straightaway there with, with the dildo off the back of his bike. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, Mike, uh, I mean, he he just, he had that pervy sense of humor, but it was like, it was... I talked to Nikki, uh, Nikki uh, Soupy's old girlfriend, the redhead. Uh, yeah. You know, you know and she, she said, what'd she say? She said, um... She said he had a way of like saying these perverted things, but it didn't make like it was fine. Like for like, whereas another guy might say yeah. something to her and she'd be like, "That's not cool." But like he'd say it, and she was just like, "It was fucking hilarious." Sally was right there laughing with him, so it was just <laughs> like, you yeah. Know. So I mean, and, and I know um, we lost Sarah. Um, yeah, that was speaking of people that he would mess with, yeah, you're absolutely so, right. Yeah, so you see on Facebook, he'd always mess with her, you know. Stuff mm -hmm. like that. The cool thing about Mike and Sally's relationship is they would mess with people either way and not get offended. I never seen them as jealous people. No. Uh, always happy, good time. If Mike got bent out of shape, he'd show it to the people that knew him. And outside of that, he still did his job. He did good mm -hmm. things. Um, I don't know. I mean, everybody gets upset about things or says, you know, uh, this person's an asshole or this person, you know. But for the most part, I don't think Mike hated people and no. always got along with everybody. So, um, it's what everybody it's, has said. Yeah. It's for, hard, man. Um, I mean, he, he'd call out an asshole, but that's, but that's different. You know, that's, it's a little different. I think. Yeah. I mean, I mean, not everybody gets along with everybody and some people do stupid shit and mm -hmm. some people, you know, screw up and, you know, he'll let you know about it. Um, but he can always move on. You know, I've seen him get mad at people, move on, and not hold grudges and things like that. But just an awesome dude. I mean, even when they lived in Southfield, got to go over there, hang out in their house. And, you know, Mike was always open open doors, come on by, hang out. We need to hang out more. And 
you know, I always talk with people, we don't have enough pitchers and you're always running around getting pitchers and that's a cool thing. I know Jig used to do the same thing. I mean, you guys taking photos all the time and just walking around like doing the Brock thing. I always tell everybody, Tim and Justin, everybody I hang out with, do we need more pitchers? We mm -hmm. need more pitchers. It's um, something I've learned from track photography is, is it's a, uh, I didn't, I didn't set out to do this, but every year I have people reach out to me for posthumous photos mm -hmm. and I, you know, they, they want to pay me and I'm like, no, no, just, just here, get these, take them because they have some service coming up and nobody has, nobody has those kinds of pictures. You know, you might have some family pictures, whatever, but just pictures out in the wild, you know, that kind of thing. It's not my initial intention for shooting them, but I was glad I had them. Mike, I'd, I'd give him like maybe 80 photos because he's the director. So he ended up in, you know, yeah. And it's, but I, 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 I weren't in, you know, I'm like, man, I do wish I had, I don't know, him doing a writer's meeting or whatever. I had some video of Nick cause he would do, um, like these giveaways and stuff, mm -hmm. but yeah, we never really did video of what well, you just don't expect him to be gone. So, right. You know, no, it, I mean, it's, it's weird and it sucks so bad because they just retired, bought the forever home and got settled in and yeah, you know, it really sucks ass, but. It was it was weird being at Groton in April, like without them there. I mean, that place that you know, Mike and Sally to me that that's they were like part of that place. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. but I uh, started shooting with SDT in thirteen or fourteen, and my first event there was a dramatic shit show because I got double booked with uh, the sideline guy, um, oh, okay. and it was a mess. The guy made a huge stink, but that's when I met Mike. Was when this guy was getting all upset, and Mike handled it. Perfectly, honestly. I mean, like, he, he didn't, he just figured out what was going on, took care of it, made sure, you know, you know, tried to make everybody happy, but also was fair, like, you know, and ever since then, we were cool, you know, and he, we, we used to laugh and joke about that after that, but it was, it was just a strange way to meet somebody, you know what I mean, like, like, under duress a little bit, but, right, but he was, yeah. you know, and I didn't know who I was going to be dealing with, it was just kind of like, hey, we need to go talk to the, the track guy, because you're, this other guy was getting bent out of shape with me, and I was like, I don't, let's go talk to them, they run the place, you know. Yeah, and you both drove a pretty good distance just to be there. Right, right, I mean, and nobody's happy about it, right, and you know, getting double booked as a photographer sucks, um, but, but yeah, Mike, uh, like I said, ever since then, he was cool, and we hang out at the Candlestone and drink, and he was pretty accepting of everybody, and yeah, that was the, everybody at the track more or less said that, like, he, you, you never seen him angry, like, ever. Sally told some story around the fire, were you, I can't remember if you were sitting there, or were you, were you, were, were you there when we were sitting around the fire? I can't remember who was there, I gotta look back and look. Uh, went in April? Mm-hmm. Uh, I was there for a bit. You, I know you were there for a little, yeah. Well, yeah. she was sitting there, she was talking about, well, there was this one time he got angry. And it's because some guy, like, just wouldn't leave her alone at the bar. <laughs> and Mike basically was like, do you want to, you know, take this outside? But, you know, the guy, it was, it was, but he was still even calm about it, you know. But it's funny to hear her, she call it, she always calls him Michael, too. I'm not, I'm not used to that, but it's, it's funny. Yeah, it's like, friends are always Mike, and she's always been Michael. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she showed us some pictures of him with like a guitar and crazy uh, 80s hair. Yeah. And <laughs> guitar, yeah, guitar when he had full head hair. Though that's one thing too, his trademark. I don't know how he ended up with the dead straight part, gray hair on one side, dark hair on the other. I he, mean, it's just yeah, another oddity that, that that's, I don't know, I'll call it a Mikeism that, that something that he had that nobody else did. Yeah, and the slick back hair. He always had slick back yeah. like that. Yeah. Always wore motorcycle boots. Mm -hmm. Never, never seen him in tennis shoes. Um, I guess he did, didn't he? Always, yeah, well, yeah. Always had. They didn't have toe sliders or anything, but they were just like some street riding boots. Mm -hmm. um, that was another thing. But you know, always had his shit together. Always had things in the right place where where he knew it, and you could ask him if he had it and yeah. help me out. I remember one time he had an extra receiver. I needed one. And he's like, I got one. I'll bring it to the next track day. You can have it. Wouldn't take any money for it. Um, still have that today. You know, it just, the guy has always been there. Um, Miss Ryden with him. Um, there was a while he was doing some get healthy stint. Started eating right and working out and riding every weekend. And 
him and I would get out and play follow the leader and chase each other. And I'd work with Sally, do the same thing. And Sally will tell you, she's got a joke where she told me, yeah, we're going out after lunch. And I got all geared up, ready to go, come by the garage. And she went and hid in the back garage because she didn't want to go. Well, she should have just told me she didn't want to go. So I went out and rode anyway. But right. she likes to bring that up. She's like, remember that time I went out and told you, let's go. And I went and hid in the garage. That's funny. Yeah. I saw, I saw him ride a decent amount, but not, he didn't ride a ton. Not not when I was shooting, anyway. Um, it seems like the directors go in that direction, mostly. Yeah, I want to say, if you started, well, probably before you, if you started doing photos in 13, it was probably before then. Yeah, I, I mean, I started photos with Ducati Indianapolis in 10, and with STT in 13 or 14. Yeah, if Ducati, I had... Yes, it was probably between nine and twelve. Or nine and when he kind of when he kind of slowed down on the riding, or well, when he was still doing the, when he, he did the health thing and started riding, oh, gotcha, lost yeah. some weight, cut back on the drinking, or quit. I can't remember if he quit drinking through that time or not. But that's when I did most of my riding. But I didn't make it up to Groton when I rode a lot. I rode more mid Ohio and those kind of places. Yeah. Right. And then uh, he got kind of slowed down on the riding. I don't know um, really what stemmed to that, but Sally did too. Sally, I know her foot or something had surgery on that. That slowed her down. Yeah. Uh, well, you kind of forget they were older. I mean, you know, not super old, but I don't know. Yeah. Some, peop we, some people can do it. Some people can't. That whole, like, 70, year old, old, 70 years old and still riding. I know he's not that old, but, mm -hmm. you know. No, but like Ken Nash. Like Ken Nash comes out, you know who he is? I know the name. I can't remember who he He's is. He's an older guy. Always wears coveralls. Oh, uh, I think so. I do know who you're talking. Brings a minivan. Mm -hmm. Parks in the middle of the paddock and that. He used to have a Jixer. I don't know if he's on a Triumph or something now. Yeah, I feel like he was on like an 0203 Jixer, if I remember right. The older. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a 750 or something. And mm -hmm. he always he'd always come out, and it's like. I wanted to ride until I couldn't ride no more, you know, and then now I just can't risk blowing out my shoulder and any more concussions, though trees and stumps are, are much better. But I just justify, all right, double-digit speeds versus triple-digit speeds. And it's different kind of injuries, that's for sure. I've hurt myself in both, and dirt riding feels like you're not going to get as hurt. But then I have a friend, Wade, who broke his tibia amphibia. Like, mm -hmm. which is, a, that's a pretty bad injury, and that was dirt biking, like, on his property. I don't know. My buddy Dan blew his knee out, like, AC, all the things, ACL and all the other. Yeah. So, I, I mean. knee braces myself. I bought some Alpine Star knee braces just because my right knee, a few months ago, started popping. And I started exercising and dieting about five, six weeks ago, and I'm still sticking with it. It's getting better, but I figured I'm getting older. I get the braces. It's basically prevention. Mm -hmm. Oh, so I'll get those and do what you can. Worst case, they'll have to put you all back together. I mean, my dad played basketball for years and years, and he ended up having both of his knees replaced. So I mean, it's you know, and, and anything you do that's uh, physical and stuff comes with risk, and mm -hmm. you know, it just is what it is. I mean, yeah. but don't want to don't want to like live in a bubble, but you also don't want to like put yourself at unnecessary risk. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's just preventative maintenance, hopefully. Yeah. Well, I, I need to get a motor in my dirt bike so I can come back up to Brock's. Oh, you don't have one? I have, but anyway, I, you, I blew it up. You were there, I think, um, last year at Brock's. And yeah, I mean, I have other bikes, but the bike that I use for trail riding, I, it's, I have a motor to put in and I just haven't touched it. I need to fix it. And I've just been focusing on other things. I've put a lot of money into the camera equipment and stuff and been working on that, so. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. Well, put something together there. Yeah, I will. I'm, I'm, yeah, for sure. Um, need to get a hold of Monty. I think I have his landline number, but because I tried to text him and that didn't work. But um, he told I me. I have a number. I tried calling him, but I know he knew. He was on the phone with Richard when they passed or when Mike passed. And he texted me, said he'd call me back, and he never did. Yeah, it's Monty. I mean, I talk to Monty every now and again. Um, but and he even told me he wanted to do a recording or something like that for me. 
and just said he, he was having a hard time doing it and he wanted to do a phone call, but I think he's been avoiding it. But I really wanted to get him on here just because he's, he's, you know, one of the people that goes way, way back. Um, right. I got know. his mobile if you want to jot it down. Yeah, I might. Don't, just don't tell him you got it from me. <laughs> um, I don't think he'll mind. I messaged him on Facebook and he gave me a number a while ago. I just didn't realize it wasn't his mobile. Go ahead. Uh, 419-351-0084. So that's the Ohio number. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that, yeah. It's northern Ohio, I think. That should be the cell phone. I'll text him, see if I can get a hold of him. Since I just talked to you, I'm going to see if I can't circle back. Babel wants to maybe talk to me. Um, I don't know. I mean, you know, like I think I've got a decent amount of stories and stuff. It'll, it'll be an interesting thing to put together. Uh, yeah, I'd like to see it. Um, yeah, I'm, I want to see it, too. You're gonna, I don't know how you're going to put it all together or when you're going to do a viewing, or maybe we can get Sally together and we do a viewing party or something. Yeah, I'm going to stop recording. Um, 